Welcome to Creative Companions, where we're all believing mirrors for one another. Happy to be here. Glad you all are here. If you could comment, let me know you're here. Hi, everybody here Hello. in the present moment with me in the in the real world. <laughs> not the virtual world. So I'm sure y'all are noticing I have some friends watching over my shoulder here today. Isn't that, it looks so cool. I like totally love it. So my friend Salora, one of our creative companions, named Salora, made these paintings. And at the end of today's live feed, she's going to talk to us about them a little bit. And she has some other art to share with us. So I'm really happy that Salora is here. Social distance over there with her mask on. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have names for these paintings? Uh, no, I don't. They don't have names yet. No, so, yeah. But, yeah, so those are just really groovy. Hi, Katie Mae. I saw what you did yesterday. That looked fun. She went to a rage room and smashed things. Ah. How fun is that? That's yeah. some good therapy. So, Katie, you can imagine, like, me making that glass art, hitting glass with a hammer. I'm Kim, by the way. I'm your uh, creative guide for today. Actually, uh, Source is our creative guide for today. We're I'm going to... <clears throat> open my channel and create some art with y'all because I don't have a clue. So we need a piece of cardboard and we use cardboard for our canvas because there's too much cardboard in the world and we often wait to do our art. We think we have to wait till we have the perfect supplies. This is proof that you don't. Grab yourself a funky piece of cardboard. Um, also, when we sit down to make our art, we tend to get nervous and um, feel a need to create a masterpiece. If it's a sh bright, shiny canvas, it can be intimidating. And we paid money for that, so we got to do it good and we got to do it right. So this helps to silence the sensor. It's just a piece of cardboard. And we're going to play with the paint on the cardboard. And I'm telling you, like <clears throat> myself, years in the painting, a big white canvas intimidates me like yeah so um we're gonna do a guided painting today but i'm gonna call this a spirit guided painting because i really haven't thought a whole lot about what we're gonna do um our chapter this week is recovering a sense of compassion so i'm going to focus on compassion in our meditation and i've been focused on compassion this week in preparing and not preparing for today, reading the chapter and just thinking about compassion and how lack of compassion has been um, hurtful to me in my life and ways that I've shown lack of compassion and then feel guilty and shameful about. So, so yeah, so we're going to meditate thinking about compassion. Then I'm just going to let my artist flow and you all flow with me um, when we get ready to paint. So we'll need our canvas, a piece of cardboard, acrylic paint and i'm gonna say like me and river say let's use all the colors let's use all the colors today so i already loaded my messy little palette here with all the colors just a little blob of each of the primary colors and i also added a little bit of white i did not add black today because i really want to keep it light and open-hearted compassion requires an open heart so um, all the colors, and it's fun to start that way, especially when you have not a clue and you're just sitting down to do the thing. Um, start with all the colors, you know, and grab yourself <clears throat> brushes of several different sizes. I grab myself five different brushes here. Sometimes that's a fun thing to do too. Go, wait, could I paint this whole painting with just this big brush? That might be fun. Or maybe I'll use as many brushes as I can. Like, sometimes I like to do that. Let's use them all. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of options. So, all the colors on your palette. We have a little uh, container of water to get more brushes in. And some paper towels. So, those are the things we need. And would you like to share a paper towel? I would love to. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Um, hmm. So, 
I'm so glad you're all here, Katie and Mary, anyone else who's watching, all of you. We're going to start right away with meditation, so we're going to set those art supplies aside. Go ahead and finish loading your palette with the colors you want, or you can pause for a minute on that and come back to it. Um, as we do every week, just get comfy in your spot and sit in a way that the energy can flow through you well, thinking of ourselves as channels. We wanna be a nice uh, open channel. So thinking that energy is flowing in through the top of our head, through our heart chakra, and then down through our body all the way out to our feet, feeding the earth who will then feed us back up through our feet. Um, so thinking of that, uh, if you're sitting, your feet will want to be flat on the floor and, you know, your spine reasonably straight and resting your hands gently at your side, on your lap, or, you know, how you could lie down if you want to. Um, however, you can make your physical body comfortable for the next few minutes as we meditate together. So starting right away with the breath, we always start with the breath. It always starts there. So I'm just taking a big, deep inhale in with me through your nose, if you would, just deep as you can. And long exhale out, just landing here. If you haven't already and you want to close your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. Just focusing on your breath. That's all you're doing. You're sitting here breathing in and out. In and out. And as we're meditating, we remember that as we continue to focus on our breath, The sounds around us only cause us to relax more. We're just relaxing here now in our bodies. A good place to be in this space. A good place to be. Thinking of compassion, if you would, just take your hands now and just hold them over your heart. One hand on top of the other, just pressing into your beautiful little heart space, breathing in and out. Feeling your heart beat. starts there. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I relax more. This is me caring for myself. I'm 
This is me caring for you. Let's bring our hands back into our lap. Take a deep breath. Maybe you've been holding yours. Mm -hmm. Long exhale. Quiet the mind. It's so quiet in here. It's so peaceful in here now. I'm going to open our eyes. Keep that sensor silent. Come to the present moment now. It's good to be here. We meditate to come to the now. To be here now with ourselves and our bodies. And to be here now with one another. Fully present to be here now fully present for the creative process that we're going to share in together and oh my we're going to have fun i can't wait to see what we make because here i <laughs> sit clueless with you so i'm going to say now let's cover our canvas let's make a background because um when we do a painting <clears throat> we start from the furthest thing away uh, we start from the furthest thing which is the background which is the sky which is the void uh so i'm gonna say pick whatever color strikes you and maybe add some white with it so you have some variations of that color take the biggest biggest brush the biggest brush you got i'm gonna dip mine in water a little and purple struck me right away of course i'm kim so purple and white is what i'm gonna do and we're just gonna cover our canvas first Ooh, look how pretty that first stroke looked oh yes so we don't want to think about it too much we don't want to um control it it's okay to get paint on your hands um we're just going to cover the canvas maybe keep your straight strokes i'm not even going to say that make your strokes however you want do it however you want to it's yours all right so while we do that let's do our weekly check-in um the, Ar the Artist Way by Julia Cameron, which is our guide for this portion of Creative Companions. And we are on week nine, chapter nine. Congratulations, y'all, that have done every chapter so far. And welcome to everyone who is new. Um, the Artist Way is a spiritual guide to higher creativity and a path to silencing our sensor. That part of us that tells us we're not good enough or we don't know how or whatever negative things it might say. We just shut it up and we play in the paint. And one of the tools that, <clears throat> excuse me, the artist way has us use to help us do that and to help us get our know ourselves. One, we have two basic tools. And one is called um, morning pages, and which is journaling. She suggests three pages of brain drain in the morning. Um and wonderful way to get to know yourself. So just checking in with yourself as I ask this question. I'm not going to ask any of you to answer me right now, but did you write in your morning pages? How'd that go for you? How's it feeling this far in? You know, has it changed? Um, uh, is there anything about the experience you do want to share with the creative companions in the comments so that we can all be inspired and learn from that too? Um, you know, for me, at this point, I've been writing the morning pages for 20 plus years, and um, it's really a programming a positive day thing is what mine has become. And there is no right or wrong way to do the morning pages, by the way. It's going to change as you do them, but it is a meditation and it is a form of self-care and you giving yourself the attention and love that you want and desire first thing in the morning. You just sit down with yourself and talk to yourself in your journal and just write down whatever pops up. Like, I never know what I'm going to write. Sometimes I whine like a damn baby. And then other times I write the most beautiful things that I can't even believe that came from me. The same as any art. You know, writing is an art form. But 
we're not looking at our journals, just like we're not looking at this painting as our ultimate masterpiece, the one and only, the one that's going to make us somebody, you know, it's just, we're doing the thing. We're just showing up and doing the thing. And we talked last week about filling the form, filling the well, filling, filling up that part of you. I guess we'll call it inspiration, you know, just continuing to feed that part. And we do it by doing these silly things like putting paint on cardboard. Is, is it significant? Oh, in so many ways we don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to say that about it. Okay, so um, I encourage you to experiment with the morning pages and um, take that time for yourself. Do it with your cup of coffee. Um, it's a wonderful meditation. And if you can um, bring the breath. Train yourself to breathe in the same way that we've been breathing during meditation when you're doing your art, when you're writing in your journal. Um, I got the message this morning to remember to slow down as I facilitate creative companions today. To just slow down. And, and that's a great reminder for ourselves when we're creating our art. It's okay to take our time. Um, we often hurry through everything thinking about the next thing while we're doing this thing, you know, and that's another, when we find ourselves doing that, drifting off and thinking about the next thing or the other thing, when we're doing this thing, which is painting and listening, now we're practicing the art of listening. Um, when we start, we've found that we have drifted off, we're thinking about something else. <clears throat> that's when we come back to the breath, come back to yourself, come back to the now. So, um, I know you're waiting to hear the next thing on this canvas, but I'm gonna make you wait another minute. So the other thing that we do is the artist date. And the artist date um, is a block of time during the week for you and yourself and your creative child to do something fun. Um, and, the, and these kind of exercises like really stimulate creativity and get that creative part of your brain working, you know, we're, we're we become so tunnel visioned in all the things that we should do during the day that we become robotic and we need to do things that take us out of our box, out of our comfort zone. I'm out of my box and out of my comfort zone right now here every Sunday morning at 11 folks <laughs> on camera hoo, 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 doing my thing. Um, but those things really like spur us into new creative ideas. Discoveries are made. So, artist date this week, um, I'd like to hear in the comments if you did one. Anybody here do an artist date they want to share? I would say I spent a day at the oil painting, and um, that was my artist date this week. I also went for a fun walk and have been really in touch with the birds and doing some bird watching. So, I would say that's an artist date too, because that's something that I really enjoy. So enjoy yourself, find something to do that's fun. And if you can find a way to do something with yourself that's fun once a week, what if you can find a way to do something that's fun once a day with yourself? Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Like just, and isn't it funny that we have to schedule in fun? Like <laughs> <laughs> work some fun into your day. All right, so, and then we're on chapter nine. Anybody read the chapter? Anybody here read the chapter this time? No. You read it before though, yeah? Okay, so I've read the chapter many times. Um, you at home, I hope someone, I hope you all read the chapter. Recovering a Sense of Compassion is a short chapter. Okay. That book on like, uh, maybe on you can get it used. Um, I don't, there is a Kindle version. I know you can get it used on like half price books, like for a couple bucks. Um, yeah, and I suggest you have one in your collection for okay. sure. I'm going to go back to the canvas now. So thinking about this, um, we're recovering a sense of compassion this week. And compassion, like I said, in meditation requires us to have an open heart, which can be scary. Pull your shoulder blades together now. <laughs> Pull your little shoulder blades together. That opens your heart. And take a deep breath with your shoulder blades pulled together. Try walking around like that in your own house next time you walk into Walmart. <laughs> it feels better to walk in love than fear. When we walk in fear, we walk like this and we're all closed up. 
it's really scary to walk this way sometimes. Not sometimes. No, sometimes. Sometimes I feel very comfortable. And I practice and practice and practice walking with my heart open. We also get very hurt in this life. And um, fear is the first thing we're going to talk about in chapter nine. Fear causes us to do, right? That's our cocoon self. And we need that self too. We need to cocoon. But we, we really need to open like we're butterflies, yeah? And we get to open many times. So this is a concept I'm thinking about for this painting is, is that heart open, opening. So I am going to start with, and, and, and just watch this part, if you would, before you paint anything. Just um, I'm going to use just a flat brush. It's just a flat, like half inch wide, whatever. Um, and I've done my background in purple. Okay, so I'm going to make myself a little light purple on my brush. A little white and purple, lighter, just a little lighter than what I've got there. I'm imagining this pose, okay, for myself. This is These are self-portraits going to be, okay? So I'm imagining this pose, but I don't want to see my face. So I'm going to start with my neck being here in the middle. And I'm drawing my outline, okay? So there's my neck, and I didn't get it quite in the middle, but that's all right. And then I'm going to come down. I'm going to make my arms go up and out the corner. So you see, I'm just seeing that doesn't even look like arms. So it's it. that's what it is, and I know it, and you know it. <laughs> so there's my arms going up, all right? So my arms are up, and then I come down. I come down. And my there I have my boobs and then my waist. All right, so I'm just indicating myself there. Doesn't it look weird? And that's okay. I don't want you to try hard to make it perfect. I want you to indicate like your shape with your arms up. If you want to see your whole head, put your whole head on there. I didn't want to. I just want to see my neck because I'm focusing on my heart chakra is what I'm doing. So I'm painting my heart space is what I'm going to do here. All right. So there. So, so do something do, like do that. that yes. Do, okay. do your form how it, okay. if you want. But your self open. That's what I will indicate yourself open. And you can show your whole form or like I did just a part of you. And, and like I'm focusing on my heart chakra because we're talking about compassion. Okay, I'm going to let you do that for a minute. And let's see what Julia has to say about fear. So one of the most important tasks in this artistic recovery is learning to call things and ourselves by the right names. Most of us have spent years using the wrong names for our behaviors. We have wanted to create and we have been unable to create. And we have called this inability laziness. This is not merely inaccurate. It's cruel. You're not lazy. Accuracy and compassion serve us far better than cruelty. Blocked artists are not lazy. They're blocked. They, whatever is blocking. And the blocked artist spends energy on self-hatred, self-regret, on grief, on jealousy, and mostly on self-doubt. You know, the blocked artist is, is sitting around it, keeping very busy to distract themselves and not and prove to themselves that they're not lazy. They're, they keep very busy doing all the things to distract themselves from simply sitting down and making the art, practicing the art that their heart and soul really wants to do. And, you know, this is about allowing yourself to do that which you want to do. So don't call the inability to start laziness. Call it fear. And, you know, one thing Sally has said to me about getting to it, that getting to the act of doing it, don't hesitate. When you approach the canvas, don't hesitate. Or stand in Wonder Woman prose and take a few deep breaths. Then don't hesitate. Pick up the brush and do the thing. So... We may have fear of failure or fear of success. We also have fear of abandonment. 
What if we step out of our box and behave differently, do something differently than we ever did before? Will the people around us still love us? Will they leave us? The, that's one of the things we all fear. And here's one. Here's one that, that really strikes home for a lot of us. To be an artist, to do that thing, to be a musician, to go squarely against what your parents want you to do, to go squarely against your parents' values means you better know what you're doing. If you're going to be an artist, you better be a great artist, right? We feel like if we're going to do that thing that's so different and out of the norm, if we're going to do it, we better do it really, really, really good. And then we set the bar too high and then we keep ourselves from doing it at all. And we feel guilty. Then we feel guilty because we're not doing that thing. It's just such a weird mixed ball of, you know, we're really just dealing with ourselves all the time. The need to be a great artist makes it hard to be an artist at all. The need to produce a great work of art makes it hard to produce any work at all. And that's why I'm saying paint on cardboard sometimes. Just allow yourself that hour to play and then you can get serious and do this kind of stuff too, you know? Um, but the, you can't make the masterpiece if you never made the crappy art, right? So you must give yourself permission to begin to take baby steps and then reward yourself for these baby steps. And again, procrastination is another one. Don't call it laziness. It's fear. Fear is what's blocking you. And what's the opposite of fear and what unblocks fear? We all know by now, I hope love, love is the answer. So we're going to go back to our painting a minute. <laughs> Talking about love and compassion and coming from that heart space, from that heart space is who we really are. And from where our, you know, our, our mind is the, um, the worker bee of our heart, our heart dreams up our desires and our, what we want to do and what we want to make. And then our heart sends that to our mind to then our hands somehow. And we put it on here. I don't know. It's magic. All right. So magic is a foot. All right, so because we have all the colors here, I'm going to go with another color now. And I'm going to start by where is my heart? I went straight to the green because I know that the heart chakra is green and green is healing and all of that. So I'm going to show you how to make a heart. So just watch now for a second. I'm going to take this same flat brush that I had made my little outline with and I'm going to make a circle first by doing this just spinning the brush and making a green circle don't do it yet because the size of the brush determines the size of the uh, circle which determines the size of the heart so you might want to watch a minute before you do yours to determine what size brush you want to use all right so i got one circle there i'm going to put my next circle because a heart is like two circles at the top right so i'm going to put one right beside it and I'm just going to spin that brush again one time around. We don't have to do it perfect, all right? So I got two circles there. Those are the two top bumps of my heart. Then I'm just going to pull that paint down. Make a heart. Bam, slam. Look at that. I can make it really pointy if I want to. You see? So that's how you make a heart. So make a heart and then like, let me know when you're done making that heart and then I'll show you what to do next. So go ahead and make your heart. So use love for your artist to cure its fear. When you're fearing, like feeling fearful, you can hold your heart like we did in meditation. And I love you and it's okay. It's okay to baby yourself. Um, and to be enthusiastic, we're just learning and growing. Thus, my green heart. It also indicates growth. So, next, Julia talks in the artist's way about enthusiasm. In over an extended period of time, being an artist requires enthusiasm more than discipline. It is a spiritual commitment, a loving surrender to our creative process a loving recognition of all the creativity around us. 
when we use our creativity, that's what we're doing. We're making a spiritual commitment to the creative process. Enthusiasm from the Greek is an ongoing energy supply tapped into the flow of life itself. So we're tapped into the flow of creativity when we sit down with our creative creative tools. And we come at it with enthusiasm. I say often, um, remember the enthusiasm of a beginner. Reclaim that. Remember what it felt like to do it for the first time. Whatever it is. Our artist child can be enticed to work by treating work as play. Your creative work, we don't even have to use that word anymore. I'm going to go play in the paint. I'm going to go play with my camera if I'm a photographer. I'm going to go play with my guitar. Play with yourselves, people. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) That's what she said. Remember that art is a process. The process is supposed to be fun. We just came to have fun. We don't need to be nervous. That's what River said. So for our purposes, the journey is always the only arrival may be interpreted to mean that our creative work is actually our creativity itself at play in the field of time. At the heart of this play is the mystery of joy. You only find joy in the present moment, in the now. It's the only place. All right, I'm going to show you how to make your heart grow now. Okay, so we're going to grow our hearts and thinking of our heart space opening. So I did my heart with green. I'm going to add a little white to my green now and make myself a lighter green. Oops. Okay. So I just made myself a little white, lighter green, same brush. I'm going to take now and take most of that paint off the brush and make that brush very dry and If you've painted with me before, you know, you've got to get it really, really, really dry. I check it on my hand. I don't want much paint coming off at all. Barely want to be able to see it. See that? Okay. So very dry with that light green. And I'm going to go around the outer edge of my heart first. And with the dry brush, you sometimes have to push a little harder. I'm just going to go around that edge of the heart like this first. Now. To make the light coming from my heart, I'm going to start doing this kind of thing. I need a little more paint. Back to my paint. Back to my paper towel. Get most of it off. Hi, kitty. Um, the animals get interested in our art, too. It's fun. And see, as I drag the brush away from my heart and out this way I put a little more paint than I would have liked right there but that's okay you just go with whatever happens it's just like life you just go with whatever happens so if you've gone too far you can always go back with the darker color but keep that perfectionist part of yourself quiet and just play with the color now here's where we could I'm gonna go all the way around first before I tell you the next thing so I'm just trying to See, can you over there see? Just your heart is shining. You're doing it. You're doing it however you do it. Um, And you might use white, just white, and the very, very dry brush. Um, We're going to come back over and over with different ideas with this, so no worries. Works in progress often look awkward. You know, this isn't... Our work in progress, you know, when our makeup is half on before we go out the door, we don't want anyone to see us. Same with our creative works. You know, this I'm not going to take a picture of and post and go, hey, everybody, look at my work. Because it's at that awkward phase. Well, we just keep on a painting. Just keep on a painting. Remembering that art is a process. So recovering from an artist block is like recovering from any major illness or injury. And it requires a commitment to good health. And how does good health for your art, what does that look like? What does that mean? You know, and I realized that one thing for me, I made a commitment to myself and my artist after I went to art school. This is what I shall do with my life. 
I'm going to make art my whole life. That was the commitment I made. And I, I've been even amazed and surprised to see many of the different forms, like the glass art and stuff. Even the painting, I didn't see that coming. I was a photographer. I thought that's that's what I was forever and ever, but I found out that there are other things. It's so fun to play and try other things, and then that becomes your thing. A productive artist is quite often a happy person. This can be very threatening as a self-concept to those who are used to getting their needs met by being unhappy. And I've talked before about how I realized there was like some, um, what do I want to say, um, addiction to the poor little me character I had created. The one that was sad and cried and, and spent so much time there. Um, so being happy, and even those moments when I would feel joy during the depressed years, let's call them, it felt weird. And becoming used to feeling good about yourself, becoming used to saying nice things to yourself. Can you, can you treat yourself as a precious object? Can you even say treating myself, treating my art as a precious object makes it so? What you got laughing about over there? That's right. That's what's going to happen. Our hearts just get bigger and bigger. So somebody's heart's growing and that's the goal. And I'm glad you're laughing because this is fun. Now, I have green here. Um, I'm going to pick another color to start just like doing some more whatever. Let's see what happens. I'm going to do some yellow. Uh, I cleaned my brush and I'm using the same brush just cause. And I'm just going to do now some maybe squiggly yellow lines. I'm still indicate like coming out from the heart. That heart is just shining more and more. Um, so you could do squiggly lines. You could do that same dry brushing that you did with the other color like that. Look at that. So that looks nice. I don't have any bright white over here. If somebody could share their bright white with me, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, I usually wait for just plain old white till the very end of this painting. So, um, I would recommend that you stay away from just solid white right now and use colors mixed with white. You can keep growing your heart this way. Watch this. Watch this, guys. It's going to be fun. So, I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to get a different one. I'm going to get a fat brush now. And I'm going to go with white and yellow. Oops, I maybe got a little green by accident, but that's okay. That's my color scheme I got. I took most of the paint off. I don't know what's going to happen because this is a messed up brush. But what I'm going to do is go in the same shape as my heart around this time. And then do this thing. And like for me, this is fun to see what I make during these groups where I'm looking over my thing and trying to make sure you can see... So I just went around my heart again with a different color to make it bigger. Now I'm going to like, I'm just showing you ideas. Like, I'm glad you're laughing and having fun. fun. You know, and a lot of times, like even that painting you might have seen that I'm working on, the oil painting, it hasn't all come together yet. It's going to take weeks for that thing to come together. And I'm not real sure about a lot of it. Okay, so let me look at this a minute. So now I put some orange on my brush. I don't know. I'm going to go with the orange, but I'm going to go with the up and down motion this time. Still going around that heart. And then dragging out. I'm going to just keep doing this dragging out thing. Like mine's starting to look like fireworks or something. And you can, and just like, oh, I'm going to talk about the sensor now and silencing the sensor. Just like you wouldn't look at your friend's artwork and go, wow, you're really messing that up right now. That looks really awful. Don't do that to yourself either. This is a work in progress. I'm going to go red now. Bold move. I'm putting some red on my brush and I'm going to dot this time. You know, you can, I'm just dotting now with a fatter brush and just keeping that same kind of theme going. No, maybe we're just creating a background right now. I don't know. This is like, spirit guided just open to the flow i like to put on really like music i like 
and just get in front of the canvas and open to the flow and let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. All right. Let's see what I have underlined. Here is a quote for us. This is from Stendhal. Man is not free to refuse to do the thing which gives him more pleasure than any other conceivable action. How about you think of it that way? You're not free to refuse to do that thing which gives you so much joy and pleasure. Your, your soul self needs you to do that thing to paint that picture, to make those dots, to sing that song, to play in that clay, whatever it is. Just show up for yourself is the point. You know, I like for like, let me say like with raising kids, we all want the same thing. They want your love and approval. They want your love and attention. That's all any of us want is our love and attention. And our artist self just wants our love and attention. And we give our artist self our love and attention. Man, we can create some works. Look at these aliens, dudes. I love them. <laughs> it's so cool for me to be able to see it right here on the screen. And like there's my head and then these two. It's so groovy. It's so groovy. So I'm going to say this is my background now. And we're going to get a smaller brush. Now, I also want to say this when we're working on our art. Um, take time to hold it out far away from you. Even get up and leave the room and don't look at it for a few minutes and come back, okay? And try that. So I'm going to let you just look at your art for a minute. Try to look at it without j the judge coming in, making no, absolutely no judgments. There is no right or wrong. Only thinking makes that so. What you have now is what you have created so far. And it's all it is. It's just what it is. It just accept what it is. All right. We often take creative U-turns, and that's what she's going to talk about next. So we're going to try not to take a creative U-turn right now and just abandon ship. <laughs> we're going to keep going. And a creative U-turn is when you get so far in a project and maybe you start to see some hope or some, like me with my book project, when somebody with some knowledge about it said, wow, Kim, you've got a book here. You're ready to go talk to an editor or a publisher. I put that book away and that was years ago. Why do we do that? That's something to ask ourselves in our journals. That's one of those questions. Uh, it's this, a successful career is built on successful creative failures as well as creative successes. But you have to have those. You learn so much from the things that don't work, you know, and you're not going to find out what works and what doesn't work without trying stuff. You know, the trick is to survive. And, you know, like I say, with, when you get that painting to that point where you go, oh, gosh, should I just chuck this in the trash or do I keep going? <laughs> I like to say to myself, all right, all right, let's be committed to this process and work on this until I feel it's beautiful. Right now, thinking of um, our let's go back to our art here for a minute. So our trick is to survive any creative uh, U-turns we made made. Creativity best heals our creative wounds. They say time heals our all wounds. Nope. Getting down to the creative process heals our wounds. And that's a great way to spend your time. So both is true. All right. So we're going to grab a smaller brush now. And you can go back and do any of these things again or more. It's all you, you know, you have all the colors there on your palette. So thinking of compassion, which is having sympathy, concern for others and ourselves, first ourselves, requires an open heart. And opening our heart more and more um, brings more and more compassion. So when I think of opening, I think of a door. So I'm going to make a door in my heart now. So this is where we're to the point in the painting that we can start adding little details. And you don't want to go too far with trying to control the background because the little details go over top of it. And you can always go back and tweak and fix on the background too. So here's my heart. I'm going to just make, and just watch for now, a little, let's do, oh, let's do one, one, two parallel lines first. 
that's all right and I just used a lighter green so there's the number 11 two autonomous ones I and I I am you and you are me we're just on different parts on our creative journey <laughs> okay so two ones I just two parallel lines in the middle of your heart I like that one vertical parallel lines and then connect them at the top see now you have a little door now make a little dot for your doorknob right so that's a closed door right so we want our door to be open how do you do that now i wasn't thinking so if yeah so we'll make another Actually, I'm going to take my doorknob off. I don't want a doorknob on that part because that's my open. So I'm going to paint inside of that shape with the darker green. That's the open door. That's the opening. Almost messed up. So no doorknob on that part. Now I'm going to make the part of the door that is open. So it would be like on an angle from that one. And I can show you guys that are sitting over there. I can bring it over. And I'll show you closer at home. So I just made that same shape, but on an angle from it. So as if the door is standing open. And that one can have a doorknob on it. And then in my open door, I'm going to bring it over and show you guys over there in just a second. In my open door, I'm going to put a little dot and I'll come back to that. That's the light. So I put a little dot inside. Here, I'm going to come show you guys, and then I'll show you what else you can do. If that's what you think, that you could make it beautiful now and take your time. All right, I'm coming back. So I made that little dot in there. So just like I was making like my heart glow with the dry brush, I'm going to grab a brush that hasn't been in water. This is a small one. And I'm going to dry brush some like, I'll show you just touching the edge of where I made that dot and pulling it out like it's shining inside there. And that's like tedious. Take it slow. And I totally annihilated my dot by doing that. See? So I'm going to get that small brush again and make a new dot. But that gives me like light rays. Whoops. Which that was one? a really crazy small one. See? Um... Your, your sensor got very activated and your sensor is silly. <laughs> you have a silly sensor that laughs at you. <laughs> My sensor is very silly uh -huh. today. Uh, and you know, if you, if you all are reading along in the artist way, the artist way, also one of the, she gives us tasks at the end of each chapter to do. And she gives us a lot of them. And I say, if you pick one and do it, bravo. Um, if you do them all, bravo. You're just getting to know yourself better when you do those tasks. And one of them is identifying your sensor's voice and identifying your sensor's personality. Is your sensor like making fun of you? Is your sensor being mean to you? My sensor is mean. My sensor is mean. Like, um, my can be. yeah. So what we're talking about is having compassion for that part of yourself that created that sensor for that part of yourself that is hurt by the sensor's voice and learning not to allow that to hurt us anymore to silence that we don't deserve to to hurt we deserve love and acceptance and and so having compassion for ourselves comes first and recognizing that we do have fear of success. We do have fear of failure. We do have fear of abandonment. We do want people to like us. And we have fear that they'll look at this and go, what? <laughs> or look at me and go, huh? You know, but 
what we learn in our journals and what we learn with working with the artist way and our creative companions that the opinion that matters to us is our own the voice that matters to us is our own the master's voice that we hear inside our head is our own and we got to know that we know my, my voice in my head is very masculine right it's almost like a man talking to me Especially if he's like insults, he uh, just pops insults. Ah, right, right, right. So that that's something to recognize too. To <laughs> right, right, right. So yeah. So at this point, just really get to know your painting here and do whatever you want and make it beautiful. Um, we have at least ten more minutes here together. Play with whatever size brushes you want. Um, maybe you want to indicate growth coming from your heart. I love to make like little leaves and little twirly shapes indicating vines, you know, and like there is no perfection in nature. If you're doing something very organic, just flow and just let it flow onto the canvas, onto the cardboard. Hey, and be grateful that you took this look, drab piece of cardboard and you did this to it you made it into that just like you can take your sad depressed you and make it into that today is gonna be a most spectacular day get yourself a theme song come on my friends come on along join in the magic join in the song make today a most spectacular day oh hi everybody there's a whole bunch of new people with us <laughs> i didn't scroll down we have mara and brenda and sharon and joanne hi y'all i hope y'all will show us your paintings when you're done and i encourage you to work on your painting even after we're done with our meeting today our group um let's talk now about um so julia's always talking about what questions you can ask yourself. So when you've been on a creative path and you're going strong and all of a sudden you dropped the ball and you took a creative U-turn and you found yourself over there, whatever, watching too much TV, too much junk food and picking your nose. Um, what can you ask yourself? Who can I ask for help to turn this around? There's a question. Who could I ask for help? One of your creative companions, someone who understands. You know, we be very careful. We learn to be very careful about that. You know, who we talk to about these artists' things. So in order to work freely on a project, an artist must be at least functionally free of resentment and resistance, anger and fear. Although painting when you're angry or can be really therapeutic too. And just use the red and the black as much as you want to. <laughs> I have a painting called Angry Flower. Um, you know, and, and learning to, yeah. So anything that we have buried in here becomes a barrier that keeps us from our creativity. What if you put it into the art? You don't have to show anybody, just like you don't have to show anybody your journal pages. You can make art about that trauma that happened to you. It helps to transmute it and get it out of you. I'm here to tell you. I All that art I made about the trauma it lives in a box. It used to live under the bed. Now it's in the attic. It has been shown to the world a couple times and it's gonna be in No Voice, No Freedom, which is my show that I'm working towards. Um, but yeah, I say get it on the page and get it out of your head and it helps you to unblock and get to the beautiful you that wants to express that make that wants to make something beautiful in the world that wants to be something beautiful in the world yeah so remember that your artist is a child it sulks it throws tantrums holds grudges and harbors irrational fears like most children it's afraid of the dark, the boogeyman, adventures that feel scary. So as your artist's higher self, as your artist parent, big brother, your artist warrior, you're your artist warrior, your child self's warrior. So it's up to you to convince your artist that it's safe enough now to come out and play. That's on you. You know, really, I, the only 
person you're ever dealing with in this life is you, you know, and become the observer of the, of yourself, become your own champion, become your own warrior. That's what we're talking about. Open up your heart to yourself to find compassion for you. One of the things that one of my counselors said to me that was so very helpful I was in her office lamenting that I wasn't functioning well enough after the most recent trauma. And it had been a month and I was still crying every day and I wasn't eating and blah, 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 and I just should be doing better by this point. And she said, wow, Kim, do you understand that you have no, you're not having compassion for yourself? I want you to think of your friend who you love more than any other friend on the planet. You can see her. You know who she is, right? So everybody think of your favorite friend, your best friend. You love her so much. Everything about her. She's so beautiful and creative and wonderful. And she got really hurt. What do you want to do? You have compassion for her and you want to bring her some soup and you want to draw her a bath and you want to at least call her up and say, I'm thinking about you. I'm far away. I love you so much. Could you do that for yourself? Could you have that same compassion for yourself and go, oh, wow, that really hurt. I'm going to I'm going to take care of me about that and I'm going to be OK with the fact that today's another day I don't get out of bed. And I just need to stay here and stay warm and cry and write my journal some more. But that's okay because I know one day, because I have learned with this art of living with ourselves and mental health, the light is always on. No matter how depressed we get and how dark it gets, the light is always on. And it's often just a matter of turning your head or opening your eyes and looking the other way looking at it from a different perspective and then making a commitment to move towards the light. And we do that by making a commitment to do something that's going to help us feel better. Having a willingness to do one thing to help our little scared self. Okay. So that's what we do. That's how we do. Be really whole and all things will come to you. It says, I can't say his name. <laughs> Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. It has a Z U at the end. Yeah, that guy says, be really whole and all things will come to you. And we be really whole by taking really good care of ourselves. Oh, here's another good quote to wrap things up today. John Holt says, it says John Holt, educator. <laughs> whatever we learn to do something by doing it there is no other way we learn to do something by doing it there is no other way then i want to read you this little tidbit i wrote we learn to be now here by going nowhere the same word now here nowhere even when we're lost and we don't know where k-n-o-w-w-h-e-r which is also nowhere, even in we, when we are lost and we don't know where, we find we are always now here, nowhere. We're always in the void. We're always now here. So learning to remember to breathe and be present with our beautiful little selves and try new things and see what amazing things we might grow into. We're always growing. We're works in progress, just like our painting. We're works in progress. Um, when is a work of art done? Well, I guess this one is done when we decide to sign our name to it. But the next one isn't known yet. And there's always more coming. And we believe in the good things coming. So... I encourage you to do whatever you want to this beautiful heart space of yours. And as you see, the part that was my torso there kind of disappeared. If I wanted to bring that back to indicate the human form a little more, which I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over those lines again now with my green to just indicate. And I'm using green and yellow together on the brush. 
just to just indicate the human form there. And that's where the heart is. It's also really interesting, too, to get a different perspective on your art. Take a photograph of it with your phone and look at it on there. I also met this artist once who had um, post-traumatic stress disorder and um, found herself often not here now. And one tool that she learned to use to bring herself to the now, we always got our phones with us, um, she would take a selfie and be able to see herself in her environment, in the now, help to bring her back to the now. She ended up doing a great art show of those selfies and her thoughts about post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and it was very, it was very um, enlightening and inspiring. Okay, so I'm going to show you some more of Solora's art. That brings us to the end of our hour. Um, over the week, I hope that you have a wonderful week. I'll see you again next week at 11. Um, we'll be on week 10, which is recovering a sense of self-protection. Um, I encourage you to write in your journals every day. Take that time for yourself. Take yourself on an artist date. Um, read the chapter. Read something else you like. If you would, post your art in the comments. And so behind me, and I'm going to try to move my chair so y'all can see, these are two paintings, and Solora is going to come stand right here so you can talk and they can hear you. Wow. So okay. if you want to tell them a little bit about these. Um, well, this is my perception of um, my aliens <laughs> that are in my head all the time. And um, I started with this guy here, and I, I haven't even named him, unfortunately, but he... Um, he is holding light. He is the bringer of the light. And he's gifting this light to his love. And she is loving him back. See and, her heart? And it's all in the eye of the beholder. See them um, looking at each other. Right. And this is uh, it's kind of my world. It's the peace tree. You know, we all need peace in our life. And um, with the, the DNA, it's... A, I don't know. It's everything. It's, it's everything, everything Salora. It's and so awesome. And these are the awesome. pods to the universe and other dimensions. There's the earth going into another pod, into another dimension. Um, and, uh, yeah. She's got the crystals over there yeah. and the chakras aligned there and just so much. That symbol Sacred is geometry. Om. Yeah, the Om. That's the Om symbol. Um, it says love here. It's just so interesting and lovely to look at. I, yeah, great. Okay, and she brought some other things I'll show you. She also does some things with clay and stones. You want to talk about this? Look at this beauty, y'all. Yeah, well, I make the crystal trees, and I love the fairy gardens, and so I like to put them together. And it's just pretty. With crystals. And... I'll just spin it around there so they can see it from all sides. And she has a little fairy there at the front. Yeah. I love it. Now check this one out. Look at this. And he's my little Norseman. Look, uh, it's, it's also an incense holder. And it's, uh, got, it's uh, got the runes and a labradorite tree. Um, Isn't he cute? Look at him. The so Norse he's made out of what? Talisman. He's uh, polymer clay. Yeah, so she made him out of clay. Check him yeah. out. Look at him. With his long hair and everything. It's so cute. <laughs> So Amen. these like, must be like, this is a nice meditation to sit and yeah. wrap these wires. Yeah, it and really stuff. is. And that one there is actually a business card. Hold well, I made it as a business card holder, but you can actually use it. Look at that. Isn't that whatever. pretty? Here, want to stick that card Yeah, so you put see. your business cards there. See, isn't um, that nice? And I, yeah, because I make these like different themes for different businesses. Um, so I met Solora out in the world uh, of vending. Um, we were vending at a common place, and then we we tend to end up at the same places here in Florida, which is great. Right. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. That's Solora's art. I thank you all for being here this week. Make it a spectacular week. I hope there's so many things that you're looking forward to. Um, oh, you could also put a positive affirmation on here. 
uh, opening my heart, I don't know, dot, 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 opening my heart makes me lovely, makes me kinder, makes me more compassionate. I choose to open my heart. There's an easy one. All right. I love you. Love yourself more and more and more and more. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.